that's a complete look. You see the one, two, and three? I'm going to do the same thing with this side. And you know, I'm going to take it and I'm going to back home, 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 back home. Back home. So when the back home stands up by itself, you've done good. When it falls down, it's not going to help. It won't hold, it'll slip. So you really have to put some nice, good back homing. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of spray, and I'm just going to spray that section, and I'm going to spray my second section, and I'm going to spray my third section. Okay. So what I'm going to do again there is I'm just going to take this and rope it, and rope it, and continue another, here you go, one, two, and three. I need to think I start connecting that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of cool there. I still have this here, right? Okay, so now I'm going to go around. I'm going to take a large clip, just to clip, clip it away so it's not in my way. So that's really important, guys. Thank you. When you're working, work section by section. That way you don't get lost and you can see what you're doing. It's almost like a road map, if you will. Okay, so there's my section. So I'm going to section that off there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go around to my side, pull that out, and then pull my other section out, and another section out, and another section out. So I've got one, I've got two, I have three, and I have four. And spray it, and spray it. I think that I'm going to start in the back. So I'm just going to take my two pieces and rope it, and rope it, and rope it, and rope it, and then pull it up and take a small bobby pin. I want some fullness in the back and I just don't want to pull it straight up. I am just going to take my next section and I'm going to divide it in half. And it doesn't have, as, if it doesn't have enough body for you, then I would go in there and just do a little bit of back combing to give it some thickness. So, okay, so I'm just adding the spray just to give me a little bit more control on the hair. And then I'm going to take it and then rope it, and rope it, and rope it. You can see my roping technique, right? That looks like a, a rope. If you will, that's why they call it roping. Okay, so I'm going to take that section too, and I'm going to pin it, spread it out there. Then I'm going to come to my next section, which is going to be my side section. And I'm going to split this in half. Then I'm going to just back home, back home, back home, and back home. And then again there, back home, back home. Even though I'm on the side or whatever side I am, I'm still in the back, back combing. Because when it comes down, I'm going to take this and turn it around and do you know one of these rolling numbers. Okay? Then I'm going to take that whole section. There used to be a hairstyle many years ago before you were born, and it was called a Gibson girl. And the, it was probably 1900s. And if you see old Western girl, or you see colonial movies where they had, all had a really poofy, and then they had this big knot on the top, that was called a Gibson girl. Okay? So this is reminding me of that feel. You know, it's where it's all wide here. Okay? Just pinning my pen. And you know, normally, I'm using these pins so you can see where my pins are going. Otherwise, I would use a dark pen. But you can see, like, it's kind of it's like texture. It's becoming softer. So what I'm going to do now is go to my last side over here. Continue my back combing on my sides here, which is my last section. And I, so I want it a little bit more rough. Okay, you can smooth it out. Or if you want it more rough, just keep it a little bit more rough. And then take that and then... I'm just going to take my bobby pin and pin that. You can see what is happening here. I am creating a lot of width, and I've got this part here. So we're going this, we're going to come this way and that way, because it's very flattering to the head and to the face. So now I have my section up here. It's not real hair. And I like working with a lot of this because Human hair is really more difficult to work with, and I love all of this messiness. So what I'm going to think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it around my face, and it can be handy some large rolling pins. Thank you. 
and I'm using my large roller pins to anchor my piece and then anchor the other side and then take some of her hair and incorporate it with my piece and all I'm going to do basically is twist and I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So I'm taking my hair here and I'm going to just take my hair and twist it and twist it and this is her hair here I twist it and then take it and hide it. Large roller pin and penny. I still have this left. Go back home, back home, back home, back home. And I'm going to take my next section and I'm going to back home, back home, back home, back home, back home. And I'm going to take my next section. She's got great hair, especially with this, the way she braided it. And it's so fabulous, it really is. And then I'm going to take my last section. Come back, come back, come back, come back home. And I'm just going to take some hairspray around the head. And this, I'm just going to go and shape it. So, but see how I just got that? So I'm going to try doing this. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to take this plastic band and I'm just going to take it and encase it. Yeah. Okay. This is a large hairpin, but this is called, and you won't find them here, I got these from New York, they're called opera pins. Many years ago, the women would used to go to the opera and they had hair like this, would put it up, they used these big pins so the hair would stay. I did a lot of wigs from Phantom of the Opera, and this is the kind of stuff we use. And we use these wig pins. These were the pins we used for the wigs. Wig pins. So I found them in New York, and I had ordered them. Because the clothes and the makeup and everything was very authentic. They wanted the authentic hardware that we're using in the hair. So you can see. You can see I have my fullness back into here. You know, having this on the top and spreading it out a little bit gives it a little bit more texture and dimension, if you will. Together. Okay? But you saw how I began, how simple it was and how fast it's going because I work section by section by section by section by section by section, right? Leaving my center out, put in a ponytail. Then I got my hair piece and wrapped it around for more support. Back home, back home, back home, and just tucked it down and created kind of like a little cushion or a little pillow on the top. I mean, this could be perfect. I mean, you could take this and modernize it and make it runway kind of. You know, and that would be taking this much tighter and making everything much slicker coming all the way up. And that's some of the styling work that Alexander McQueen would have in his collection. His, his, his hairstyling was over the top. You know, and he would probably, this is probably something that he would use in a collection. When you see the clothes and you say, oh, it works with the clothes and the hair works with the makeup, the makeup works with the whole image. It's, it's a whole image, guys. When you're doing hair, when you're doing makeup, when you're creating, I like to create from here to here to, to the rest of the stuff. So you can see the full image. It's like when you're doing a bride or you're doing someone that's going to a formal affair, I always ask, what are you wearing? Short, long, backless, strapless, whatever, so that I can think of an idea and think of a style that's going to enhance her body, face, and her hair. If she, you guys saw how I started it and how it finished. Basic technique, you know, remember, I worked section, remember I did section one, section two, section three, section four, section five, then section six, and then I got my piece and wrapped it around as foundation. I back home and got my, my uh, uh, hair and I spread it out to the front and spread it out as like a fan. My, my total love company. And I'm just going to have her stand up so you can see the whole, the whole look. Because I'm taking it from the makeup 
to the close, and then I'm done with my bus. And then we can take it to stand up. And you can see now, does this not work the whole way? I mean, today, short shorts, boy shorts are really in. So we're using the boy shorts. We're doing half, because they're showing a lot of half and long sleeve. We're doing a lot of bling, tons of bling. And then we're doing the, the makeup, it's kind of tribal. And outfit, this is very zebra, so it has kind of a tribal feel. So, okay, the whole thing seems to be, and even if this comes down, it's cool. And I, that, I mean, I didn't even see that, but that's cool. But you can see that I worked it from here to here to here. That's a complete look. Your name in the box, and we call your name, you get to win. Alexander McQueen was one of the greatest fashion designers that killed himself about two years ago. He was uh, the most fantastic, I mean, he was totally out of the box. This is the first time I'm doing this. I've never done this before. So anything that I do, I always, whatever happens here, and happens here, happens there. I don't know if you saw me on the main stage, but I call it my comb a wand. Because we're magicians. I mean, truth be told, I mean, don't you think you can take one person and like, you know, take a little bit of hair and make it that big. All we need is to do the smoke and pop, it's there. Okay, but isn't that kind of true? So I really consider that we are magicians. We create magic you know, within the time frame that's given to us. That's the whole thing. Everything is really basic, but you can elaborate it, and you can even make it over the top. But if you don't have that foundation, and for your newbies, you learn foundation. Learn how to do pin curls, learn how to do finger wave, because that is what's happening right now in fashion. Because there's a lot of stylists they go to school, and yeah, I don't want to learn how to, I don't care, I, I want to learn how to cut, and I want to learn how to color, and that's it. So now they're out in the industry, and people say, oh, can you, can you do, can you do a wave, and you look at you like, no, well, why are you a hairdresser then? Okay, a hairdresser does everything. Okay, cut, color, style.